game three. Mr. Lubufu versus me. Una versus Omnath. So, I chose to go on the play. So, he's going to draw first. So I drew my hand and I was like, <clears throat> I was like, okay, so we have two mana. It's a pretty awful hand overall. Very slow, very awful. So I mulliganed for free, drawing my seven again. And I believe he kept as well. So, yeah, Mana Scrooge, would, Mana Scrooge in a mono green deck would be the most ironic, pathetic thing you could imagine, particularly in an EDH deck, because you have so many options of ramping, and it's just, it's pretty awful. <laughs> It'd be pretty awful. So this time I drew... Alright, so right up, I see I got three, three forests, which is excellent. I have a, an Explorer, an Explorer, which will let me ramp up to the third one very quickly with the card draw. And I really like the Garrick because he lets you pl untap two lands. So if I get a doubler or Omnanth, either one out, it's totally fine. So, so I play an additional land, I draw. So he has Leyline of the Void in play from the start, so it exiled, which made me nervous because Leyline killed me last game. So he played Demir Aqueduct. Demir Aqueduct, he bounced it back to his hand. So now I have four, very nice. I can either play Kadama's Reach or Garrick. And I'm pretty sure I went with... Pretty sure I went with uh, Kadama's Reach. Let me see. Oh, okay, I, did, I went to play Omneth. And I dumped one into him. I guess I saw the ley line. I realized I had to start putting pressure on him pretty quickly. So, he had no creatures out. So he played an island. He transmuted Demir Infiltrator, I think it's called. Which let him get something exact. The transmute, I think, was two. So, he's thinking. So he went and got a Demonic Tutor, of course, because he wants to get his combo piece with the Ley Line of the Void, and I was like, oh, crud, that's not good. So I untapped, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I drew, I was like, okay, I got I got one in Omnath. So is it worth playing Kadama's Reach or Garrick? So I think I chose Kadama's Reach. I chose Kadama's Reach because I was really need pressure, so it usually puts one in your hand, but I hadn't played a land yet, so I dumped into play. So he had the ley line out, which made me ner very nervous still. So I was like, what am I going to do to handle that ley line? So I could play Garrick, but I didn't want to yet. So I couldn't yet. So I made him into a 4, I'm not the deaf 4 4 to deal 4 commander. So he went down to 36 and he had 4 commander. So I passed my turn and he drew. He played a Tainted Isle, blue black, dual land. And that was kind of interesting. So he brainstormed. So I was like, okay, so he's brainstorming. I'll probably likely get a combo piece, uh, maybe with a different combo, or maybe a counter spell. So I was thinking, what am I going to do next turn? Maybe, so he tapped into Isle to play Soul Ring, because he didn't yet have a Swamp into play, so he couldn't get the blue or black. So he tapped the Demir Aqueduct to play his Demonic Tutor, I believe. Yeah, he played his Demonic Tutor, of course. And I don't even know why I'm saying that. He had to play a Demonic Tutor. So I'm a little nervous. I even said, I think I even said I'm like, I'm on a clock. And he's like, hmm, maybe I'll go for a different combo. And I'm like, in my head, I don't think so. I think you're going to go for that combo. So I was like, okay, well, now I have enough mana going. So I really wanted to stop him because the ley line was really ner making me nervous. So I might have been able to play more ramp, but I decided that I'm, so I'm pretty sure I played the prime. 
so I attack with Omnath, and second main phase, it dropped him to 32, 8 commander, then I played Woodfall Primus to destroy the ley line to ease my conscience a little bit. So it destroys a non-creature permanent when it hits play. So he was not thrilled, <laughs> to say the least, but I was much happier. So I gained board control a little bit, and I let him go. So he untapped and drew. So I was like, okay, I might as well just start my ramping stuff. He has no flyers, and his one combo piece would collapsed. So he probably wasted the, demon the Demonic Tutor getting the Helm of Obedience. So I played an island. And I was like, maybe I'll play. Seaborn Muse. But said let me untap all my lands during his turns. So he had um, two black, two blue, three colorless currently. Which is a lot of mana, but I wasn't unduly worried. I had some good stuff in my hand. Can handle flyers, ramping. So he played Gilded Lotus with the Demir Aqueduct. Leaving the Dimmer Aqua Duck open. Guild Lotus lets you tap for three of any color. Any one color, sorry. So he played three blue for a treasure mage, which lets him get a six cost or more artifact. So we got Keening Stone, which is a nice milling card. Yeah, it lets you mill off a lot of stuff. I think. Six, you play it, and five, tap it, put X cards, target plays life into the graveyard. And I think it's the number of cards in their graveyard. It does it again, if I remember right. So he he ended. I untapped. I'm like, okay, I got plenty of mana going. Omneth had one on him at this point, so he still need two two, but I wasn't too worried. So that was a very nice pull. Uh, pulling out the acidic slime was very nice. So I could get rid of his Gilded Lotus and undercut his ramp. And I also could ramp. So I think I would, I think I was going to play the Garrick into the acidic slime, if I remember right. So I play Garrick to untap two lands, and then that leaves me with four, and then the one on Omnath, which lets me play the acidic slime. So, so I wasn't too concerned with him attacking Garrick, so I tapped the four and then one. Sidic Slime landed, and it, uh, it killed his Gilded Lotus. So the Primus attacked, six, six Trample, and he dropped to 30. But, but sorry, he dropped to 26, he dropped to, not not 30, because he had taken 8 from Omnath. So he was on 8 commander, he 32, dropped to dropped 6, so he dropped to 26. So now I had a pretty nice control of the board. He he still had counter spells and wraths that I was concerned with, but I had the seed born, and the overwhelming stampede would kind of end the game. So I was kind of saving that for if I got a couple more creatures. A bigger one. So he played Memory Jar. Funny artifact. This lets you. It puts. When you sacrifice it, happen sacrifice it. Each player puts their hands on the side, draw seven, end a turn, discard the seven, or whatever's left, and put your hand back. So for him, it would let him draw a card. It would let him draw seven. He could play a land if he hadn't played one yet. He could bounce things, wrath, wh whatever he needed with it. So it's a rather nice card to have around. So that was rather nice. So he had three, three land, uh, three land open, and then he said go. So I untapped, I drew. Oh, very nice. I got a mana reflection. In my head, I was like, oh my god, I think that might just be game right there. 
because it didn't seem like he had a whole lot, unless he could counterspell, but he only had three open. <clears throat> so I wasn't too worried about counterspell, but it could have happened. I decided just to go with it, so I played Mana Reflection. But I was... I was concerned, but I said, you know, I'll just play it anyway. So I play it. And he's like, I don't know what that does, but it sounds scary. And I'm like, yeah, all my mana <laughs> generates twice. So I was a, uh, I was very happy to get that out. He didn't do anything about it. And Garrick untapped two more, putting him on five. Left two open, but they're really four, not two. And I gave it to Omnath, so it turns into a 5 5. And Treasure Mage was sitting in play, but I mean, Treasure Mage wasn't very scary, so I attacked him with everything I had. I was being very aggressive. So he chumped Omnath, which was, in my opinion, probably the worst decision, because he was only on 8 Commander. So I would have. Well, actually, maybe it wasn't such a terrible decision. Now I think about it, the Wolf of Promise does have Trample. That wasn't too bad, actually. So he jumped that, he took 8 more, putting him on 18, so he was kind of, I'm sure he was a little nervous at this point. So he tried, he memory jarred it during his turn. So I was like, oh my god, I got Kozilek, and I'm gonna have to discard him and shuffle him back in. And I asked, I asked about cycling my Tranquil Thicket, which was actually really stupid, because if I cycled it, <laughs> I would dump it in the graveyard, sure, but then I would draw the card and have to dump that at the end of the turn with the memory jar, so that was kind of a really dumb thing to do, but I did it anyway. So I'm like, wow, that was really stupid. <laughs> Who was thinking that? But I was kind of mad because I had Kozilek was good, Birds was a nice ramp. The real thing was that I was, the Mold Shambler could get rid of Planeswalkers. The Vernal Bloom was another doubler. Always love to have multiple doublers out. Strip Mine could let me destroy his Demir Aqueduct, which would be another undercutting of his stuff, of his mana production. So I was kind of upset that that was my hand that I had to draw, because it was all going to the graveyard, except for Cozy Lake. But, I mean, at the time I wasn't so upset. So he played Jason's Ingenuity off of a Mana Vault that he just played. So he draws, I think it was three cards for Jason's Ingenuity. So... So I asked him why, I mean, wouldn't, don't you think that Tidings might be a better card? So he was like, oh, but cool, look, it's a promo. I was like, oh, that's really neat. Promo Chase Ingenuity is pretty pretty nice. So it's an aesthetic choice, really. But then again, his deck isn't really a competitive deck by any means. It's more of a fun playing deck. So, and I was kind of just tapping the Alkazilek, saying like, damn it, I'm losing Alkazilek. But, especially because I had enough mana to tap him out right now. So, <laughs> he actually played a strip mine off of his hand he drew, and I had a strip mine too, so I was so I was like, hey look, we both have a strip mine, except I'm losing mine, and you're not. But I wasn't too concerned about his strip mine, because in Omneth I don't run a whole lot of non quality, non-basic. And the Mulch Amber was very nice. So it was a pretty, pretty decent draw hand, but... Yeah, so he... I think he mostly tapped out to play Tesseret the Seeker, untapped his Mana Vault with it, and then he was, and then he was, he was trying to decide what to do with his Mana Vault, but his Mana Vault gives three colorless, and I was just really mad about that, cause he like, <laughs> I was like, cause he like, so he was kind of upset, he tapped mistapped the wrong lands. I mean, he's not he's never really upset, at least not visibly, but but he he, he tapped the wrong land. So he was he realized he was probably gonna be overrun next turn. Which was true beside overwhelming stampede. But he said, Ah, oh, you know what, even though it's probably game, I'm just gonna play it out. And I agreed. So I just got my hand, caused it like went back into my deck and the rest of the cards were in my graveyard. And at the time, I mean, he's on, remember, he's on 18. I think he has a Tesseret the Seeker out. I don't think he has any creatures left, so he's pretty much overrun. So I, I untap everything. I drew, and this was ridiculous. So I drew Cozy Luck, which I, I guess I didn't shuffle very well, 
Not that it really mattered very much, because at the time, he ar we already knew it was game over. So, but I was like, what the hell, I drew Kazi like... It's like, Michael, what kind of s terrible shuffler are you? And I was kind of cringing inside. But I turned Omnath into... A I gave A+, plus, plus one on the Garrick. So Omnath is a 9-9, nine nine. Garrick turns into a 6, I think. And it untaps 2, and I tapped... 2, 4, 6, 8... 10, leaving 2 open because of the mana reflection. And I played, just in case somehow I didn't win, I played a Seaborn Muse so I could ramp Omnath into a, an impossible to stop. And then I put the other 5 into Overwhelming Stampede and I waited for him to counterspell. He couldn't. It gave 9 plus 9 and Trample from Omnath, so they all turned into enormous creatures. So he was like, why don't you just attack my Tezzeret? And I'm like, okay, I can attack your Tezzeret. How about I attack it with Acidic Slime? And he's like, yeah, that'll kill it. I said, yeah, and the other two will attack you. And he's like, Omnath is 18. So I think you're dead. So I attacked Tezzeret with the Acidic Slime. I attacked it with the other two. And he was dead. So that was three games, three full EDH games in less than an hour, although the second one was an instant combo. So he was really sad with the memory jar. Because he was hoping to get like a Black Sun Zenith or a Life's Finale or some some board wipe wrath. Or at least to get like Grim Monolith and a tuner, Tutor and that way he could get another combo to make infinite mana and land Una. But we called it a good game. It was a really good two out of three. I had a lot of fun. So we hope to do many more in the future. And I'm going to hopefully next time make the camera a little better. So this is the last game. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and feel free to discuss below.